On tonight's episode of Bees in TV, Alana Sarabia is joining us. She's the youngest co-host of Dallas's most beloved morning show, Good Morning Texas, and she's confidently sharing her tips for chasing your goals and communicating your value. We're here with Alana Sarabia, the co-host of Good Morning Texas, and she's gonna share with us her tips on confidence and making your dreams come true. Alana, thank you for coming. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, I need to tell everybody that I feel like we know each other on social media. <laughs> we do. And we finally met. It's so, it's so nice. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. And she's just as wonderful in person, you guys, as <laughs> she's on TV. Patriot okay, I can vouch for it. Yeah, we're sweet. So Alana, let's talk about your journey. You are just living your purpose right now at Good Morning Texas. And you said that ever since you were a kid, this is always really what you wanted to do. That's right. And with, thank you. Um, I grew up here in Dallas, Texas, and I grew up watching WFAA. I grew up watching Gloria Campos. And um, I always kind of knew I watched so much television. I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I'm going to be on TV one day. Um, and I can't sing, I can't act, so maybe I can report the news. Uh, so. <laughs> So yeah, that, that kind of turned a little bit to, I think I'm going to help the dogs and the kittens and I'm going to be a vet, but then quickly turn right back around to getting into broadcast. But it wasn't in front of the cameras, it was uh, mostly behind the camera. Really? I got a little what were you doing? I, well, I went to school um, for production. I wanted to make like music videos. Well, we need to consult you here on Bees and TV. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, no, no. I, a I woman of many talents. I mean, you know what? I think, I think anybody in any business should know not just what you're doing, but everything else around you. Mm -hmm. And it really helps synergy within the team. Well, and that's just one of the many pieces of great advice that you have. You just, Thanks. you come across so together, and I know that it takes a lot to do what you do every day. What are some of the habits, like the healthy habits that you would want to share with our viewers that you think help you? Thank you, but hey, things can be deceiving. Do we all really have it together? <laughs> like, I don't know. We you can at least try have our it together best. 75%. <laughs> we can try our best, you're right. And, and, and as long as you're putting the effort into it. And yeah. so, uh, let's see, I, funny, I work on a morning show and I'm not a morning person. And so I oh, kind of have this. That was yeah, an adjustment, huh? There's a lot of coffee involved, a yeah. lot of coffee. But even day, like a day to day getting ready for the show, um, the show is Monday through Friday. Uh, the kind of the night before it's in anything you go into is like preparation i tell people that and mm -hmm. you would think well duh but like truly um i can't go into the show at 9 a.m and not have read my scripts or not know what guests are going to be there the day mm -hmm. or know what topics we're going to be discussing whether it's fun light and fluffy crafting to something that's a little deeper like the police shoot uh, shooting so yeah. so uh the first thing i'd say is you know even if you're not feeling like it or you're feeling kind of uh, tired that day or just not having it, you know, get ready for the next day because whenever that wrench is thrown, you'll be able to dodge it. Oh, that's such good advice. Just push through it, force mm -hmm. yourself to really show up. Prepare. Prepare. Yeah. Just, just do prepare. it, guys. So another thing that's really interesting about you is that you're the youngest co-host. How? <laughs> and you said that that can be kind of a challenge, right? Like people kind of look at you and sometimes will take you seriously. How do you combat that? You, you, uh, yes, I, I think I'm, I'm going to self-proclaim that right now. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've gotten to know some of the past hosts and kind of did some research and I'm almost hundred percent sure that, um, so I was hired, I was 26 years old. Um, but I, I spent some time in San Antonio television hosting a similar show. So mm -hmm. the experience is there and you that's that what I How many years? Was it like five years? Five years in San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah. So I worked on there for, for the Fox affiliate of NBC. But the point of that is, is that regardless of my age, um, you know, if there is a minimum age requirement or years of experience or, you know, whatever my age is, if I meet that, that requirement, you can't, you can't undermine that. Right. You know, and so I think often people say, oh, well, I can either be interviewed by X person who might mm -hmm. be older than I am or me who is still in, uh, then was in my mid twenties. Okay. Um, they might, they might equal my age with an inexperience or my age with mm -hmm. a bad interview or younger equals they won't be able to empathize with me more and so right. that was the kind of barriers that I had to break and luckily um, I didn't run all of them but I won most of them and uh, I help people understand that even though I might be uh, not a typical age of a television host in Dallas Texas that mm -hmm. I was still as comp uh, competent mm -hmm. thank you yeah, yeah. Sometimes it happens too. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> you know what? I'm relieved. Hey, it's so it's so sweet how down to earth you are because you just are really, really amazing on the show and and just being here, your energy is so positive. So you talked about earlier about how you know it can be kind of a little hit to the ego when you don't feel like you're validated or or someone understands you at work. And I think that a lot of us can relate to that in different instances. 
And uh, you kind of told me your strategy for how you handle that. Can you share that? Uh oh, I think I shared a few strategies with you, so hopefully you said, were, sorry, I can't remember like, what you said. There's a few strategies. You were like, mine never matter. You were like, when somebody, that's a good one too. Um, when somebody hurts your feelings, it's like, it hits your ego, but you like, you just kind of push through anyways, and you have to like, be realistic and be like, they're paying me, and you just kind of like, forge through it and not let it. One unique thing about Good Morning Texas is that it is an hour long. Um, a large chunk of the content is content that is about North Texas and, mm -hmm. and the people of North Texas and uh, a little part is sponsored content. Mm -hmm. And so when we have sponsored content in, um, our clients can kind of say, hey, I'd, I'd rather work with this person or that person. Mm -hmm. And so whenever they, they opt out of working with me, uh, and I hear it's about my age or even like, for instance, me not being a mother, mm -hmm. and their content is kid focused or um, maybe being a wife. Well, I'm not a mother or a wife, and mm -hmm. so, and yeah, it, it, I think you have to have a healthy ego being right. in this business, mm -hmm. you know, uh, don't don't flirt with cocky, but right. just enough confidence. confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I'll tell you what, Brittany, the first time that happened, I was like, <gasps> oh my gosh, that's how I would be too. <laughs> and like, like, my feelings are so hurt. Calm down for a moment, I'm like, you know what though, yeah. I get it. Because if I was in their shoes, and mm -hmm. I had this message to share about newborns, I would likely, want to talk with a mother uh, or somebody who had a newborn before. So, but right. that took some time to understand. Right, yeah. And you swallow your pride and you say, you know what, I get it, it's a business. Mm -hmm. It's really good advice just to like remember that. And it's a business like any other business and we just kind of have to uh -huh. keep moving. Exactly. So, Alana, what is another confidence tip that you have? You're always speaking on television. You're always in front of people and meeting new people. How, do you ever Thank feel you. nervous or anxious? No. Uh, there's a healthy amount of nervousness because I think that shows you know, you still care. It's excitement, yeah. You know, you still care about what your product. Um, but here's my biggest tip: is what I do for, especially in my in my business, and maybe you can take that and apply it to whatever yours might be. Um, but when I'm in the studio, I'm talking to thousands and thousands of people every day, live from nine to ten. But I never think about it like that. Instead, I think about ah. the cameras. Not that there's a person on the other side, but I'm thinking there's going to be another person on the other side that I don't know. And hopefully I've made a friend with them, but if they by chance don't like me and, and take this for truly what it's worth, um, they aren't impacting my life. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say they write and say something mean uh, and Joe Blow says Alon is the worst. You know, well, I don't mm -hmm. really know Joe Blow. I'm not going to let him impact my life or ruin my day or anything like that. That's and so that's good. kind of my mindset. Well, on that note, <laughs> that is such good advice, you guys. On that note, we'll be right back with Alana after this break. We're back with Alana, and we're going to talk a little bit about rejection, something that none of us like to face, but that we all come up against. <sighs> Brittany, listen, How do you that one guy it? just did not like my hair, and he rejected me <laughs> how so hard. not like your hair? It's beautiful hair. <laughs> I'm kidding. But that's a good example of how rejection is. It's like, sometimes there's really no good reason. You can't let it get you down. You're just Yes, easier said than done, and so. 100%. Uh, and I, I know I keep making reference to to uh, my job because, well, it's my job. But <laughs> you know, no matter what business uh, you're in or what background, you know, you're gonna apply for something, or mm -hmm. you're going to try and get that promotion, or um, it's just you have to make yourself vulnerable at some point, and yeah. it's a 50-50 chance on whether it's gonna be a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And even if you do have a thumbs up more, uh, when you do get that thumbs down, it just hurts so bad. It does. Why? It does. We're human beings. You know what? We have feelings. Um, but it's how you, you take that and what you do with it moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, men, ladies, whoever is watching right now, you are allowed like a few hours to eat your chocolate. Go okay. some ice cream. I like this. Go we're gonna and cry. It to hours. Do whatever you want to do. Good, yeah. Like put your hand, and your face, and your pillow. Just go and nuts for a few hours. Get it out of the way. Right. And then after that, you take it and you move. Uh, you move forward. And I here, love that. Here's a my a little bit of my my personal life being wound into my professional life is my mindset is that if it did not work out, um, then you weren't supposed to be there that wasn't mm -hmm. in your cards and us being producers we like to produce our life right yes we want to know what's next right and we, and if we possible, like to be able to, it's great to write the whole thing yeah if, if you said something that was great earlier you said but we're not the author and that's right we're not. And, and no matter who you might look up to that is bigger than us you know it could be um oh, this Brad. god or, or a buddha or, or a meditation <laughs> or an oprah it could be oprah You're like god it's like oprah <laughs> be, oh yeah i mean hey, listen you never know no judgment here sure. whoever it is <laughs> <God>, okay <laughs> <laughs> you know to some 
people. Yeah. Oprah is that person. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, but whoever it may be that, that you look up to that is bigger than, mm-hmm. than you and bigger. Um, they just It wasn't in your cards. But that's for a reason. That's a reason. So just be patient. Be patient and something else is going to come along the way. Maybe that chapter is going to end when you didn't think so. But there's a reason that chapter is going to end because a new one's going to start. Where did you get that conviction? Because even when you're saying it, like just sitting here on the couch with you guys, I can like feel the energy of like how you're just being honest. Like I can feel that you really believe that. Some people will just say things, but I can feel that you believe it. You're Where so- did you get that? Did that come from your parents or from your religious background or? No, uh, you know, it actually came when I moved here to Dallas. Um, so, you know, I spent some time in San Antonio. My family's now in San Antonio, even though I'm from the North Texas area. And uh, I had to take a really big leap of faith coming, uh, leaving San Antonio. My family was there. It was the only career I've ever known. And on top of that, my other half is there too, my long-term uh, boyfriend. Oh. And so there was, there was a lot of changes. Yeah. Kind of, I'm going four hours up you know, the highway. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to the other side of the world. But, right. but I had a lot of anxiety. I had a lot mm-hmm. of stress. And I realized I can't live my life with day-to-day stress and anxiety. And so how am I going to take that and cope? Mm-hmm. And uh, I've just come to the conclusion that... Um, no matter what the outcome is in my professional life, in my first professional, in my romantic life even, um, if it doesn't end up the way that I hoped, then um, yeah, I'm gonna be upset about it. But then, you know what, there's a, there's a plan out there and uh, I'm just here to make sure that I try and live it correctly. I love that. That's really great. That's wonderful. So you were also talking a little bit about just this business and some of the people that we run into, I run into all kinds of people as well. Some people supportive, some people are not supportive. And that's another kind of rejection when, whether it's, you know, someone that you're working with or somebody who's, who watches the program that you're on, it can feel kind of weird when you feel rejected or like they don't want to be your friend or it's like, I don't know, it just brings back those old feelings. How do you cope with that? Like, how do you deal with those types of people? It's almost like feeling like you're not enough. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like you're like, you show up, you're like, I want people to be your friend and like you. And then they, they're judging you or they just kind of are passive aggressive or rude. What do you do? Uh, well, you know what? That happens. That happens actually more than I'd like it to. And I know. Me too. Yeah, me you too. too. Yeah. Oh, poor thing. Yes. It, is, it happens more than I'd like to. And I can't help but go, wow, that person must be having a really bad day. Yeah. There you, you know? go. Because you're surrounded with a bunch of, you know, whether we're at a community <laughs> event, a charity event, or just like eating. Like mm-hmm. eating's fun. Don't be mad about eating. Yeah. Shouldn't you be happy right now? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so if you, if you have put so much energy into frowning and making sure that you aren't pleasant to someone, you know what? You have a bigger fish to fry that does not include me so I'm just gonna leave it at that and move again just moving forward uh, with that but I wanted to touch on it's funny you bring that up about not being enough yeah because I grew up I've told you Brittany, I grew up here in Dallas and um, I grew up a very chunky little Mexican girl three brothers only girl like grew up dancing I was always in the back row grew up cheerleading I was always like the real um, odd one in the in the squad oh, just yeah kind of, just didn't really quite fit in and mm-hmm. no matter what group I was in I was always kind of like the last thought and always like looked over and I always knew that but I just kind of thought that that was my place and I'll tell you what, even growing up here um with girls in like North Texas and Grand Prairie Arlington Dallas I mean just this whole metroplex yeah the girls here are competitive they are everything. They are. And everything. And mm-hmm. that just like brought my, like, especially when you're younger, beat me people are really open about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I think trying to like overcome just like growing up in such a competitive market and not yeah. just in television, but in cheer yeah. and just like having like a decent purse or like mm-hmm. having, you know, um, tamed hair. I mean, just mm-hmm. like living, <laughs> just living your just life living, yeah. and trying just to have like to confidence truly and yeah, feel keep, like you're included mm-hmm. and keep up with everybody else. Yeah. That was really, a lot. really difficult until again, just, I don't know, one day I'm like, you know what, what I have, it is enough because, and this is, this is when I realized this and I hope I'm not just going, I'm not preaching here. Um, but Preach I, it, sister. Told- this is good <laughs> stuff that we should be talking about. Oh, well, this it, is it, a great point. And honestly, and even right now, even as a 29-year-old television host in Dallas, Texas, you know, that feels great to be able to come back into the community that helped raise me. But that same kind of competitiveness is there, not just with women my age, but in women general. Yeah. And uh, and I, this is what somebody told me, and I go, okay. I'm going to wear my holy jeans and I'm going to wear them with pride because that doesn't mean that I am, you know, and that, that's, you know, kind of a joke. If I want to wear a t-shirt to, they say, I'm going to wear a t-shirt. I don't have to have the nicest clothes or the newest shoes or the latest on trend haircut or whatever it may be. When we die one day, I don't want some, I doubt that someone's going to come to my eulogy and say, oh, but she had the best 
you know, name brand purse. Yeah, what a she had the most amazing yeah. pink couch. You know, I really hope that they have something much more to say than that. And I doubt that they would say that too because I don't own a pink couch. Uh, but, you know, we, we are all going but to leave did. this earth one day. Yeah. That would be really great if I had a pink couch. <laughs> it would be so cute. Yeah, we all leave we all the same way. You know, we all wake up with, sorry, stinky breath. We all have to go number two at some point. This sorry, is I'm true. Going there right now. Yeah, she's you know, going there. We are all made the same. We're all going to leave the same, you know? Yeah. And so whatever I can leave an impact <laughs> on other people here, you know, I just, I realized that it's not worth that extra stress about all these material things. So that, that Alana, really you are me so right zen. Oh my gosh. I love this <laughs> perspective. Zen. Yes. That's why you're here on this couch. So <laughs> got a little personal. Sorry. <laughs> we love it. So we'll have more from Alana right after this break. So Alana, we were talking earlier about knowing your value. Can you tell us how you make sure that you always remember your value and communicate it to others? That's hard because I think that, um, I, I can tell you how I do it for myself, but everybody needs to find the way that I think is best for them and most mm -hmm. comfortable. Um, but when I think about, hey, what can I bring to the table and, and what, what equals Alana equals value? And I think it's, whether it's in a team or you as an entrepreneur or you, um, you know, as a, an individual, uh, what is it that you can bring that nobody else can break? Mm -hmm. Okay, I and mean, maybe that's your fun personality, and maybe that's um, a show, Viz mm -hmm. TV. Are or, you saying me? Oh, thank you. Uh, or, or, okay, or the fun. fact that this team is made out of amazing women here. I'm so blown away by oh, by wow. your team here. Uh, but but what is it that you know? What would set your television show apart than any other television show? Mm -hmm. What makes you unique? What makes you different? Take that become an expert in that and uh, I think that that easily uh, equals your value mm -hmm. and then it's just going to continue to build before your eyes you're not even going to realize that and people are going to start to know you for for what you bring. That's such good advice. So anybody watching, whatever it is that you do or that you love about yourself, mm -hmm. be sure to like write that down, journal about it. Talk about it, think about it, and really bring it to the forefront of your mind. Yeah, and, and, good maybe, advice. and that's another thing too. And if you can't think like, oh, well, uh, I do this, well, somebody else does this, or this already been done before, mm -hmm. or this is something I'm passionate about, well, somebody else is already talking about this, or there's a lot of people who are passionate about this too. Well, that gives you an opportunity to just to dig deeper. Yeah. You know, and, and find what what you can do that's maybe just a tad bit different, and then monetize on that or um, hone in on that. I love it. So another thing that you always talk about and that you're definitely practicing what you preach, uh, just helping other women. And you said that you always answer people's messages and, and I've known that to be true about you. What is your philosophy on just helping other women to rise together? Thank you. I, um, I do take a lot of pride in that, but anytime I am like, few days late or I haven't responded to somebody and I'm like, oh, I'm so, so sorry. Uh, there's usually a, a reason for it and sometimes I just have to give like all the digital world a break. Mm -hmm. um, but my mother once told me this and I have found this to be very, very true. But she said, Alani, this, somebody might not always remember the, what you told them, but they will always remember the way that uh, you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And so even if, you know, up to today, you know, I, I, I definitely know this is Brittany and I know that she's an amazing person doing great stuff. Uh, but we had never met before, mm -hmm. you know, before today, but you had made that impression on me even through the digital world. And I hope to do the same thing because um, I have been in, I have college students reach out to me all the time, hey, Alana, I'm about to graduate from UNT or Texas State or whatever mm -hmm. it may be, you know, any advice. I remember being in their shoes, you know, like you were just l looking and hunting for any guidance. And, and if anybody took your bait and you had a response, man, it was a happy, it was a good, good yeah, day. Like really so affected your I thought yeah, you do that to somebody like, else. Mm -hmm. Like, absolutely. And then they're going to pay it forward. And then that person's going to pay it forward. And then, you know, and then world peace. And then world peace. That's where we end. And then world peace. But pretty much, yeah. That's basically. the last thing you want. If everybody did that, it definitely would help. Yeah. It, you know, <laughs> kumbaya, a lot of uh, just happy people. And you never know, especially in, in the business, you might be working with that person one day. So the last thing Good I want point. is like, oh yeah, that Britney girl, she didn't she respond so to my rude. emails. Yeah. yeah, no, that's not what you want at all. You no. know, don't burn bridges. Be nice to people. That's going to take you much, much further in life. Mm -hmm. Well, Alana, such good advice in so many, just personal, professional, and knowing your worth, knowing your value, and obviously you're communicating that and bringing that to everybody that you meet. So we really appreciate you. Can I encourage um, anybody at Please do. Or who Get in there. Yeah, you see know, it. Maybe you need some motivation or maybe mm -hmm. you do something that I have no, I like, I don't know, maybe you do uh, 
meditation or so, so. Uh, maybe you sack bags at a grocery store like whatever you do and mm-hmm. you need a little like motivation reach out to this one right here Brittany is super message me yeah, <laughs> yeah re- message Brittany you can message me I can guarantee <laughs> that uh, that you know I can do what I can um, to, to help you out and maybe brighten your day just a little bit because that's what women are supposed to do we're here to, to lift each other up agreed yeah sees us <laughs> she's like don't Thank volunteer me Alana <laughs> no no it's true I want to <laughs> So All right. Thank you, Alana. We really appreciate you being I here. Fun. I had fun. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so just talking to Alana for a little bit, you know, she comes across as so poised and so confident, and you really get the impression that, you know, there's nothing that she really lets keep her down for long. And I love what she said about, you know, if you're upset or if you've had a bad day, give yourself three hours or whatever. Give yourself a few hours and, like, eat that chocolate, you know, be sad, cry, but then move on and just trust that, there's a higher power that's in control and that everything is happening on purpose for your journey. And what a wonderful way to live, right, you guys? Something that we can all do in our own lives now, inspired by Alana, is, you know, first of all, let's get a journal and write down all of the things that you love about yourself. Really start to grow in that self-confidence and that self-worth so that you know what it is that you have to offer the people that you come in contact with, whether it's on a date or with your friend group or in a job situation, just knowing what makes you who you are and being able to communicate that I think makes all the difference. So with Alana being so young and already acting as a co-host on Good Morning Texas, you know, I think that all of us can take away just, it doesn't really matter how old you are or, or what your gender is or your nationality. You know, right now it's coming to light that there are still so many inequalities, right? We just had Dr. Courtney Baker on the show not too long ago, and she was talking all about gender inequality. So I think that there are so many instances in life where we feel like things are stacked against us. And that is the truth in many, many cases. But what I saw in Alana was that, you know, she just really prepares herself to the best of her ability and then she shows up. And I think that that's something all of us can take away from this interview tonight. It's just to prepare ourselves to the best of our abilities and to not think about those opportunities that aren't meant for us, but to just continue to walk forward in our path and show up as our best self. Thank you for joining us for tonight's episode of BZN TV. For more information and inspiration, be sure to check out our social media at VZEN TV.